All right, so in this video, we're not going to be talking about just one, two, three, four, five, six. No, we're going to be talking about all my Cuban false chameleons, the breeders. I might even make a joke and talk about the egg. We're going to talk about the babies, holdbacks. We're going to talk about the Cuban project a bit. All right, y'all ready? Let's roll that intro. This is Goliath. Why did I call him Goliath? Now, if you're an old-timey nerd, or from the 80s or 90s, I believe, there's a show called Gargoyles. Main character, Goliath. Now, I don't know, a lot of people like to think they look like gargoyles. I mean, they have that gray skin tone, they don't move a lot, so it kind of felt right to call him Goliath, you know, named after a gargoyle, because, you know, he'd be a gargoyle, you know what I'm saying? But, as you know, he's my main breeder, and he's actually one of my first Cubans I ever got. I got him in a deal, a uh, local around here. Guy had him at the expo. It was a really good deal. Came with this cage actually behind me for a breeding pair. They only laid a couple eggs. The female I got in that deal, she passed because um, she was just tiny, you know. She shouldn't have really been bred, but she was being bred by them. And, you know, when I got her, she was, wasn't doing the best, and she didn't really take much into my care. And then she kind of just passed. Big shame, but I was like, okay, you know, it sucks. Move on. I still have her pictures up. There they are. Big respect on that lizard. You know, she is one of the main girls. Got me into all of them. But, yeah, you know, I bought him this girlfriend, and I bought a lot of others. They've all been doing well, but sold most of them. Now we just have this trio and the babies left. But, yeah. You know, Goliath, he's the goat, um, one of my first breeders, he's here forever. If you look at him, he has these beautiful little ports right here, really bright compared to most. He also is really active, as you see. Ooh, you wanted to puff your air at me? Ooh, thank you, gangster. But yeah, he's also my biggest Cuban in size and weight. He's a big boy, a fat boy. But he's also my most calmest and one of my, and my favorite, if you can't tell. He's also the logo. All right, buddy, back into your resort, a little vacation, a little home. All right, so this one is No Name. Now, she has actually produced, I believe, the most Cuban false babies that I've actually made and sold to most of the people watching or who have bought them and not watching, which they should. But yeah, she's essentially one of my earliest breeders I got. I call her No Name. Some people don't like that. I think it's kind of funny, you know, but if you also watch on the social media, you know, the Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, if I remember they exist, is she'll be the one, I'll put my hand in the cage, have a roach or a cricket, and try to get her to come walk out. And that's because she's actually my spiciest Cuban. Now, what do I mean by that? She is my most ready to puff out the dewlap, puff up the, the back ridge, you know? She is my meanest one, and hell, getting her out of that cage now, she almost actually bit me, and that would have been funny, because she's the mean one. She would have actually put some pressure on that, so that would have been a fun thing to do. Yeah, but I like her still. She's pretty calm once you get her out of the cage, but while she's in there, she's a beast. Now, Patty is my favorite female Cuban false chameleon, believe it or not. Why is that? Well, if you take a look at her, what is she missing that Goliath and No Name have a lot of? Darker coloration, banding, just different variation, variation in what's going on on their body. She is fairly mute besides a couple streaks here and there. And I like that a lot. I call her Patty, very short for patternless. Now, she is not a gene mutation. There are no uh, known gene mutations within Cuban false chameleons, Enola's Barbados or Porcus or any of the low cows. Sadly, for now. But, cool thing is, she just, she looks odd, right? Especially compared to others. Now, why is that? Well, no one's really put in that time. What I want to do here is I want to essentially uh, line breed without inbreeding as much as possible to create more of her and kind of get more of this mute coloration and just keep getting at it because I think something that the Cuban false community, uh, the Cuban false community really needs to get at is what the Europlatus people are doing, where they have animals that are mimicking sticks, leaves, and all that, but they're line breeding for high reds or high greens or high blacks. They're line breeding, you know, they're trying to do something within this, right? Which is really cool. I don't see that with them because there ain't that many people trying to innovate on them, which is a shame. 
that's what I'm trying to do here with this. It may not be the most exciting, but I like it. It's what I want to do. And if you know, if you have passion towards it, you're going to do a lot more success in doing something you don't have complete passion towards. My passion with this project is trying to make more of this and make it better. You know, one of y'all out there watching, you know, go find some nice high greens or high reds. Go make yourself a nice high red or green line. That sounds fun. I'd probably be interested in it then. I actually was working on it, but I sold the pair to buy something that's coming up and y'all that will have its own video very soon. If not, it's already out. Anyways, let's go talk about the babies. Now, this is my holdback. Now, why is he my holdback? One, as if you're paying attention when I was talking about Patty, well, this is her son. Now, her son came from Patty and Bands. I do not currently have Bands. He actually was sold a while ago. But, you know, this is their son. Now, as you see, I like him for one very interesting reason. He does something very similar to his mother, which does not have a whole lot of color or uh, variation. It's very mute. Now, he is only, say, three months old, but, well, you know, when they get older, I'm gonna get to see more things pop up, and if he continues at the rate he is, which is keeping that, then, well, I'm gonna buy him a girlfriend one day, preferably a flesh pattern, and then he's gonna get at it, and then their babies will probably be bred onto more stuff and try to make a more reduced kind of uh, pattern line, which is gonna be really fun, because I think these guys need a line to start, you know, getting everywhere. But yeah, he is my oldest Cuban I am actually currently keeping, baby-wise. You know, the other guys are much older than him. He's only a couple months still. But, you know, he is fairly cool. He's been here for a minute. And, you know, he's about the size of what the babies would actually get sold at, for those wondering. But, yeah, he does what his mother does, but he has a, a weenus, you know? So, yeah, that's why he's getting kept and hopefully can get bred out to some girls one day and they get to make more babies like him. This was actually a holdback. Now, why is he not a holdback anymore? It's because I'm not a, I'm not in the mood at the moment to work on a high green or high red project because I would still have to source out, um, you know, two opposite parents of high greens and high reds and then line breeding it. And doing that with the patternless thing I'm trying to do would actually be fairly annoying while also trying to work with the other uh, Cuban locales and other anoles. So anyone out there, remember, you know, get that project started. I'll buy into it later on. But um, as you see, he does have some higher greens and I'll play some videos where he is actually more beautiful. But um, essentially, he's cool. He was a holdback. He still might be one day. I'm, it's kind of undecided. But um, if anything, he's going to probably get sold to a buddy of mine. And he's great. He has lovely little personality on him. But yeah, isn't he adorable? Youngest hatchling. Now, he is only a couple weeks old still, so he is nowhere near ready to ship. But he is eating on his own and drinking on his own. So he is pretty much ready. He just isn't old enough. That's the sad part of it. You know, he just isn't old enough yet, in my opinion. But what is the funny story behind this guy? Well, as you know, I have an incubator. How else do I hatch him? Now, I don't just put eggs in an incubator and watch what happens. Um, what I actually do is I'll put them in these cups you're seeing on the screen. And then I'll put some of this... Um, Pangea hatch right. Yeah, I used to perlite, but you know, didn't feel like doing it no more. I wanted to give it a try. But pretty much, you know, this little escape artist was in there. Let me put him up because he is an escape artist. But pretty much, you know, um, he's in there, and next thing you know, I'm expecting an egg to hatch. And what happens is this. Well, I go in there and I find an egg. Right? It looks a little deflated, so I'm like, oh cool, so either it hatched or it is about to. I guess it's coming out the egg. How cool, maybe I got a video. And it wasn't there, so I was like, huh? The math isn't mathing? So I'm, um, I'm like, okay, this is weird, but it had a slit in it. It looked empty, it looked like a viable egg when I found it, and it's still a viable egg. And you know, mom and dad are up here, Goliath and No Name, and they make always 10 out of 10 eggs. So I was like, this is, there's no way this happened. And if so, this would have smelt 
if um you know this happened and that looks like an egg tooth slit so i take out the other eggs for about a minute or two and then i'm like okay did he escape in there and i for a day i'm like okay cool i guess i did something weird with an egg how odd go in there the next day because i need to put a new egg and what do i see sitting in there a baby cuban false chameleon so i'm just sitting there wondering to myself where was he because i put my hands under the water bottles because i put water bottles in there so they have a power outage if it goes out i can't retain heat in there for a bit and he wasn't there he was hiding so i thought that was pretty fun pretty cool so he pretty much got to hide and run away for a day and he got to come live over here with his uh Oh no, distant cousins. They're not related at all. They're just, I don't know. I didn't know what else to say. Yo, all right. A little bit of thank here before the next clip. So first off, y'all should sub, subscribe, you know, share the video, leave a like, have a comment in the comments, argue in the comments, love and positivity in the comments, leave a comment and you know, yeah all right prepare for an info dump let's go. getting a lot of people who are just finding out coming to this i want to spread this real quick you cannot get them out the wild there are no wild caught cuban false chameleons in the american trade at all at the moment you know they aren't coming in but there are a lot of really poor quality animals being produced and reproducing and just in horrible conditions and honestly be completely for real with you i've seen those animals at the show and I've seen wild caught animals next to them. And I got to see these animals, you know, look at them, hold them, talk to the guys. And I got to see the captive bred animals bred in very poor conditions. The wild caught animal looked healthier on the outside. And, you know, at the end of the day, we know wild caught animal and reptiles in general are very good at hiding issues. But, you know, if they're still in a healthy enough condition to hide the issues, that's still not that bad you can fix it and you know if someone who has some experience get their hands on it it's gonna be fine with the false chameleons i can visibly see issues just looking at them you know they were dehydrated very skinny very frail um they were not very social with people at all very bitey animals very flighty and they just overall weren't good animals not saying to buy from me you know i like it obviously but don't buy from people like that or a pet goes to a uh, distributor or pet smart. Same thing, essentially. Pretty much, there's your info. Into the video. <laughs>